Okay, hi everybody. Part two, uh, post ride care for an Alta 300 or 310, uh, just the way I do things. Uh, after I've done everything, uh, I come to the back of the ski and uh, I spray this whole area, the jet pump area, with fresh water uh, for a couple minutes. Uh, spray all in there. I know it's already had water in it when you were flushing it. You get some water dripping down around this area, but I'd give it a good two minute spray in there, spray all the hoses, uh, go up to the ski. Let's see if I get something to stand on. Put it in reverse. Then go back, spray some more. You can see you can get at everything there. So that's in reverse there, the bucket's down. Really give it a good spray. Two, three, four minutes, whatever you want with fresh water. Put it back, take it out of reverse. There. Okay, and then what I do is I also spray into the intake grate with fresh water as well. So I'll go underneath the ski and There's your intake grate underneath the ski. Spray fresh water in there. Uh, you could just bring the hose from the side if you want and feed it up here if you don't want to lay underneath it. Maybe lay off to the side so you're not getting all wet. Spray that thoroughly with fresh water and this is a great time to check your uh, impeller. Do you have any fishing line in there? Rope? Plastic? Whatever on my Yamaha over there, I've picked up fishing line a couple times. I've had good luck with this one. I haven't picked up anything, but after each and every ride, have a look in here. You know, is the impeller damaged, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, anyways, and on the way out, spin your speedo wheel. Make sure there's nothing jammed in there. Okay, so you've sprayed all that with fresh water. And if you're in salt water, I'd come up and spray this hood hinge. There's your hood. I would spray this for a minute with fresh water and just let it drain because salt water gets in these hinges and, and destroys them. They seize up and they're quite expensive. Okay, so that, that's it for the fresh water spraying. Now, as I talked about in the previous video, I take this off because I want it all aired out uh, that presents uh, another problem. If you're if you're in a sealed garage like me, great. Some of you guys might be outside, uh, and you want to leave it open for a couple days to get all that heat and moisture out of your motor. Um, what I suggest is you could take a material like this. This is plastic, and cut it to size and uh, use something like duct tape that you can reuse and use many times and just uh, a thin strip and stick it around the edge and seal this whole area off. Obviously a rodent could chew through it but you'd certainly know if you had one in there so we'll get a shot from the back and uh, so, so you could do that and, and you could put your cover on it if you have a cover as well because the heat will still come out and it'll make it somewhat uh, mouse, rat, and squirrel proof. And or you could take some corrugated steel and lay it on with maybe a rubber uh, piece around the corrugated steel. So um, I think it's critical to get that heat and moisture out. While we're talking about rodents, uh, obviously if, if, if you just left your seed on and you just let it air out itself with the seed on, this is an entry point for a rodent, these two here. Another entry point here is your exhaust. It wouldn't be uncommon for a rodent to go up there and make a nest in your water box because that's what they're looking for and they love chewing wires as we know and contrary to popular belief, rats don't chew wires for food. Apparently they're sharpening their teeth is my understanding. So uh, another area that a rodent could get in is up in here. Here's your uh, handlebars. They could go down in this area. Here's your uh, gauges. They could go down in there, nest in there. So uh, they could come up through the front by your recall plate. Uh, 
they, they could come in behind here, nest in there, so, you know, there's lots of different solutions to look at to, to keep a rodent out of here. And uh, I had a, uh, one of my sea dues was the uh, GTX IS, their top model, and it has a cover on the engine, a plastic one, and I had a rat in here from when they built my house. Some guys left some food in here. I guess he had lived in here for many months, and I thought it was one of these geckles. Well, I knew it was a rat because he, he chewed a hole in my engine cover about like that, and they make a real mess. So if you're keeping your ski outside, be aware of rodents. Have a good look at your ski. So there's an, there's an entry point, the exhaust, these holes here. There's another entry point. I mean, you could just stuff rags in there when you're not using it. I mean, I don't know, uh, or some kind of material that a rat doesn't like. Because, God, if they get in your ski, they could, they could do a hell of a mess. Uh, same as up here. Plug this off somehow. Even if you have a cover, they can come underneath your cover and, and get in there. Also, when I had a rat in here, I have a, have a, a car here. It cost me about $45,000. Not really expensive, but expensive enough. Luckily, uh, we knew he, we found out he was in here, but he did a hell of a mess around the whole engine area. He started chewing all the covering around all the wiring. So, uh, if you're keeping your ski outside, be aware of rodents. So, anyways, that's today's tip. Hope it helps.